The official death toll in Gaza since Israel's genocidal onslaught began has surpassed 40,000. Now, this has been widely seen as a horrifying milestone. Let's listen to Volker Turk. He's the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. Today marks a grim milestone for the world. The people of Gaza are now grieving 40,000 Palestinian lives lost, according to Gaza's health ministry. Most of the dead are women and children. This unimaginable situation is overwhelmingly due to recurring failures by the Israeli Defense Forces to comply with the rules of war. As the world reflects on and considers its inability to prevent this carnage, I urge all parties to agree to an immediate ceasefire, to lay down their arms and stop the killing once and for all. The hostages must be released, Palestinians arbitrarily detained must be freed, Israel's illegal occupation must end, and the internationally agreed two-state solution must become a reality. Well, the official death toll is wrong, and we shouldn't be using it. We certainly shouldn't be relying on it. It shouldn't be at the centre of how we describe this genocidal onslaught and the human impacts. Now, before you get alarmed, and think I've become an atrocity denier or an apologist for this genocidal onslaught, I'm saying this because the official death toll is much too low. And I'm going to come on to that. Now, firstly, as the brilliant Asal Rad, an academic I've interviewed on this channel, who monitors headlines, exposes, media organisations have stripped accountability from Israel when reporting on this milestone in the official uh, statistics. Uh, let's Look at these examples. Associated Press. More than 40,000 Palestinians have been killed in Gaza, the territory's health ministry says. No accountability for Israel. CNN World. More than 40,000 Palestinians have been killed in 10 months of war in Gaza, health ministry says. No accountability for Israel. The BBC. More than 40,000 killed in Gaza, Hamas run, health ministry says. No accountability for Israel. Israel, note how they put in the sly Hamas run health ministry to discredit the figures. Sky News, Gaza conflicts, thousands remain unidentified as death toll reaches 40,000. No accountability there for Israel either. What happened? Was it a natural disaster, a hurricane, a tornado, a tsunami? Anyway, we could go on. Now, as the Israeli newspaper Haaretz details, if you just use the 40,000 figure, then Gaza is one of the bloodiest quote-unquote wars of the 21st century. I say quote-unquote because this should be regarded as a genocidal onslaught primarily, not a war. It's too asymmetrical to be described accurately as a war. Now, this focuses on the rate of mortality based on looking at deaths compared to the overall population, which, of course, should be the key measurement. Now, 40,000 would be around 2% of the pre-war population, which Haaretz puts at around 2 million. And um, For Israel, the equivalent, the newspaper notes, would be nearly 200,000 people. Now, according to Professor Michael Spaggart of University of London, a researcher of war and armed conflict who monitors the number of casualties in conflicts, he assumes Gaza is already amongst the top five deadliest in the 21st century. He adds, if we factor in the amount of time it took to kill 1% of this population, then it could be unprecedented. Now, if we look at other so-called wars, take the Syrian civil war. Now, that's regardless, regarded as a truly brutal horror show, and quite rightly, too, horrific. Around 2% of the population is believed to have been killed in Syria. A similar number as estimated in Gaza, but with a key difference. That's over 13 years. Gaza is 10 months. Iraq, about 1% of the population in that hideous war, but over the course of 20 years, not 10 months. Yugoslavia, half a percent of the population. Look, the Yugoslav wars are regarded as hideous, truly hideous. I've just got back, fully enough, from Serbia, from Belgrade. Half a percent over 10 years. Ukraine, 0.5% of the population over two and a half years. That's still hideous, by the way. That's still a hideous, horrible war. It's just what's happened in Gaza is specifically horrific. It's a crime of a truly colossal scale. Now, the article adds the death of 2% of the residents of a region within less than a year is an extremely exceptional occurrence in the era of warfare after World War II, especially outside of Africa. It goes on, during the Vietnam War, estimates are that 5% of the population was killed, but that was a war that lasted almost 20 years in various incarnations and weaponry was used indiscriminately and widely. In Syria, according to strict estimates, about 2% of the population was killed, similar to Gaza, but the difference is significant. The Syrian war has dragged on for 13 years. 
Now, we know the official figures are not an overestimate, as has been claimed by apologists for the Israeli state, because they were vindicated in previous conflicts. Key agencies from the United Nations to NGOs have validated them. The, Un the Lancet Medical Journal, the most prestigious on earth, has validated them. Other researchers have done detailed work validating them. US officials have validated them. Privately have, uh, so if Israeli officials do read Plus 917 magazine, uh, which has gone into that. But they're likely to be a very significant underestimate for many reasons. Now, I'll give you a few key reasons. The first reason is they don't include people buried under the rubble, classified as missing. They're clearly dead. I'm sorry to have to say that, but they are. That adds thousands of people to the death toll. The second is that the figures exclude indirect deaths. Think about it. Imagine the entire healthcare system of your country was obliterated in the absence even of invasion and the total violence that Gaza has enveloped, that would impose a terrible death toll on any country. Now think about that in Gaza, in the context of Israel's onslaught. The healthcare system there has been destroyed in a meaningful way. So think of cancer patients, thousands of cancer patients, they're not getting the medical treatment that they need. Some being killed now, others will die in the future as a consequence. Think of other health conditions, diabetes, heart conditions, think of pregnant women, think of newborn babies in these apocalyptic conditions. The third is many deaths are not being reported to the authorities, not least when entire families or groups of people are killed without witnesses. We have seen footage of the Israeli army killing civilians and then burying their bodies. The fourth is frankly crucial. The reporting system has virtually collapsed. The Ministry of Health figures relied, of course, on the medical system, on hospitals. But the medical system, indeed, the hospitals have been destroyed. So those figures just aren't reliable anymore. Society itself, the basics of civilization have virtually collapsed. A bureaucratic system which can accurately report this level of death simply isn't there anymore. So that's why estimates of the death toll given by medical experts range from 92,000 to 186,000 people. Now, a spokesperson for the US State Department was challenged about this slaughter by Saeed Arakat, who is a Palestinian journalist. Let's have a listen. Upon what Jennifer yeah. mentioned about crossing the 40,000 uh, mark. I mean, this is more than 10 to 1 as far as the, I mean, you know, all lost life is precious and so on. But now we have at least 10 to 1 Palestinians that have died. When will enough be enough? Because I know you say, you know, one more, we don't want to see it. But the fact of the matter is that you've been saying this since last December, you know. And we have killing every single day. Every single day, no 24 hour goes by without killing at least. 36, 40, 50 Palestinians, most of them children. So, I mean, when will enough be enough? Said, what we are exactly focusing on is uh, trying to have a resolution that would allow the fighting to stop. That's why we have time and time again, and again just a moment ago, I said that the best thing uh, for the parties to do to minimize impact on all, including the Palestinian civilians, is to accept uh, and finalize a ceasefire deal, one that is encompassing of uh, the hostages being returned, an influx of humanitarian aid, and um, broader diplomacy to happen for the region to get out of this endless cycle of violence. Tom, go ahead. Utterly contemptible. Utterly contemptible. This mass slaughter has been made possible every step of the way by the United States government. Most of those violently killed were killed with US-supplied weapons. They've just given Israel a massive new shipment of weapons. They have offered diplomatic support, aid, the works. This is one of the worst crimes of our age. Bear in mind that, and I'm sorry to say this, that so many more people are likely to be killed. There's this horrible term, excess deaths. Over the coming years, excess deaths, that's deaths above what would have been the trend otherwise. Who, who even knows what that will be? There have been estimates already of what that, what that could be, and they are horrific. This may end up being the deadliest military onslaught since World War II. And it is important to make this point. Certain things flow from the fact that this is one of the most abominable, abominable crimes of our age. That is, those who cheered this on, who legitimised this, must be held to account, including through the justice system. And those who had platforms, who had power, who had influence, who chose not to speak out and not to call this out for what it is. And I'm not talking about platitudes and hand-wringing. They too need to be held to account because all of this is on them too. Please like and subscribe. Do leave your thoughts and comments. Always read them. We've got a very big 
new story to come, which I'm very excited about. You'll see what I mean. Um, that's what I've been working on for the last few weeks. Uh, you may have noticed intermittent coverage. That's why. You'll see why. Um, <laughs> you're going to find it. Well, you'll see what I mean very shortly. Um, keep us on the road at patreon.com forward slash 84 um, and listen to the podcast I'll speak to you soon.